okay so welcome all to another team pranar community session as you all know as a part of team pranar community we invite one entrepreneur every month uh, to uh, understand what is their why of starting a business to understand what pain they have gone through so that our team pranar community can learn from them and uh, what things we can do to reach to our goals faster now today's guest is a very special guest uh, to be very honest i came across a documentary called as own the room one month back and uh, when i saw that documentary i was mesmerized by the sheer passion of all the participants they have shown they have basically shown five participants in the documentary but there was one participant which connected with me the most because the business was not around any product or a service the business was around creating an experience and that experience is something which is the closest experience we all have and that is being happy now what if i tell you that uh, there is a company which actually creates an experience which will make you happy which makes your family members happy and that business is called as offering happiness all the way from nepal and we have today with us the founder the co-founder of offering happiness mr santosh pande welcome santosh thank you so much nitesh ji it's a pleasure Hello. santosh to have uh, have you with us and uh, all of us are excited to listen to you to hear from you your journey and uh, all the teenagers that you see are from our internal community and all the coaches are from our lpcc community which helps them learn about uh, team entrepreneurship so very excited santosh to have you and thank you for obliging to our request to come on a sunday afternoon and share your knowledge with us over to you santosh thank you so much uh, nitesh ji thank you so much uh, nitesh ji uh, it's my pleasure to be here and share my story as well um so hi everyone uh, i am santosh from uh, kathmandu nepal and like nitesh said i run a company uh, named offering happiness uh, so today i will be sharing my story of how did i start this company offering happiness and the challenges that i faced because i started early uh, maybe not young as teen but it was early you know as a student and then those along with those challenges definitely i got lot of opportunities as well so i'll be sharing those stories today um so i think i'll be sharing in the first half i'll be sharing few sto- my stories then i will have question and round as well uh so let me begin i think uh, it's best way to begin the story is by relating with your age i mean those who were teen itself so uh, uh back in 2000 i mean in mid 2000 my parents decided to send me to a military school actually and it was a school run by nepali army and um so i i stayed in hostel for around 7 years and after my hostel uh, one thing that i felt was i was good at, at academics Uh, but not with extra curricular activities and a very mediocre student every student i let's say uh, but with ambitious uh, goals and like you i used to have those goals but i was a very average student during my school uh, but good with academics i was every i mean i was good with academics that, that in that part only but later on what i realized was staying in hostel life and even in the military bomb up it was a Uh, different boundary set and it, there were, we had to maintain discipline we are not allowed to speak to any strangers and that actually uh, that environment actually developed uh, me as a shy person actually i could not talk to people anyone outside even to go to a local shop and i needed to, to build a courage from inside actually i had to build a courage to just to go and ask something in the local shop or interact with anyone that was the case uh, right after my school um, then i decided to join science because uh, from i mean like in nepal uh, parents did i uh, definitely i think in india also it's also a similar case uh, most of the parents want your 
ch children to be doctor, engineer, or something in those backgrounds. So similar was in my case as well. So I decided to join science. Um, I was good at academics, but I could not talk to my even my classmates itself. So I was a last venture. Uh, I was a last venture by not because I wanted to uh, do. I mean, be a last venture actually because. Uh, I could, I, I, if I stay in middle or in the front row, then I definitely have to interact with a lot of people. And that was not me. I was so shy, so I decided to go to last bench and, uh, and the class progressed. And after a few months, I realized that if I, I mean, if I go in this way, I think uh, there's going to be a lot of trouble that and then my, those ambitious goals that I had or those ambitions that I had, I'm not going in that path. And then I decided that I think I should move out of my comfort zone. Then um, I started looking for the local events that's happening in Kathmandu, around Kathmandu. I started taking part, even small voluntary activities. I started joining events that was maybe in public speaking, even networking session. Uh, I was joining every session that was possible. I was in every events. I was someone who used to pop in, in every events in Kathmandu that, during my high school. And I felt growth at that time because I could interact with people. I was learning about new things. I was exploring. That was in my teenage. Uh, I was 17, 18, or 17, 16, 17, I think. And then at that time, I decided, uh, I explored a lot of things. I even joined a political party because I had so much of energy that uh, I wanted to do something. I wanted to work for change. I, I, I was, I was, I, I had, I mean, different kind of energy that, that those days. And uh, I joined politics, I was very active in protests and everything. So that's where I learned how to interact with people, even digital marketing. I, you have to do social campaigning. And then I learned how to use uh, social media for campaigning and a lot of stuff. And that's how uh, my technical skills also got sharpened. Uh, but I was, I, I was preparing to be a medical doctor. I right? then have an entrance preparation for MBBS. And that's uh, the time I, I had to go for MBBS or do something else. And at that time, I made a hard decision. Uh, that decision was I decided I was preparing already for a year for MBBS entrance preparation and decided that I will quit this and I'll join something else. And I joined uh, humanities. I, 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 I plan to study development studies. Um, and there was a scholarship uh, provided by South Asia Foundation. Uh, it, uh, for all those SAR, SAR countries, they provide a single scholarship, one student from each country, and I applied from Nepal. And I got that scholarship, luckily, I don't know why, but I got that opportunity. opportunity. I, I jumped from science to humanities. Uh, and, and then my ne next journey began, actually. I quit politics because I felt like uh, politics is not my thing right now. I have to develop myself. Then I joined an NGO where we used to empower young People, I mean, we used to uh, conduct trainings um, and even seminars, motivational seminars all around Nepal. And that's how I started my, uh, I mean, little career in organizing events, uh, even in, in, inside college and outside college all over Nepal as well. And during that time, I made a few friends. I mean, uh, those were my seniors actually, but uh, in my same, I was in first year, they were in third year and fourth year in my college. Uh, but we were so close because we used to organize uh, events um, every week. They, we used to come up with new idea. We used to implement it inside college itself. And that's how we felt like uh, we have to do something. I mean, this team is so unique. I mean, actually, we didn't have idea in the beginning. We had a team and we wanted to do something with that team. So we were four people um, uh, of same college, uh, almost uh, same interest, almost same uh, skill sets as well. We're not like uh, complementing each other as well. We, we had the same skill set as well. That was weakness of our team as well. But we decided, let's go, let's do something. And we started looking for ideas. Uh, it was uh, back in 2016. So we decided, let's look for some ideas. Let's start something of our own because we uh, are organizing a lot of events. We're doing voluntary works. We are traveling Nepal. But now I think we should do something of our own. And that maybe that will provide some kind of financial sustainability to ourselves as well. That was also the beginning and thought in the thought process during that time. 
and we, we were looking for ideas and we came up with one idea and that was my one of my friend got a gift uh, it was a handmade calendar with his favorite days and everything like plans for a year and it was in 2016 itself and he got that gift from someone of his I mean a close friend and then um, the idea clicked we had we used to work with people who were very good with handicrafts and crafts and why not start delivering this itself but let's do something let's do it in a unique way let's do it we will deliver it in surprise way. We're not going to tell you guys you are, we are delivering a new gift. We'll just go in the place where they are. We'll do it in this very unique way. And that's how we started doing it. It was just a passion in the beginning. In 2017, we launched uh, Offering Happiness um, with the idea that we'll uh, deliver handmade gifts. We'll make a lot of handmade gifts and we'll deliver it surprisingly in, in, to the receiver. And that's how we started. Uh, but. I'm not as I I studied humanities. All of my friends studied humanities, but no one of no one of us were business student. So we did I mean uh, normal calculation that maybe after five six months we'll be profitable uh, and we'll start having good salary. Then our life will be set and we'll be having growth. A lot of stuff, but that didn't work out because there were uh, we could not meet any of our goals. In the first month, we just had sales of, I think, 15,000 and we had to pay to our three uh, um, uh, craft makers and a lot of people. And we were keeping our own money every time from our pocket money itself because we're students only. Uh, I was in my second year of my college. So anything that we used to make outside, I used to do freelancing work a little bit. I used to manage uh, digital marketing uh, for few brands. I used to keep every, I used to work for them. I used to keep those money in those that offering happiness, that business. That's how I started. Uh, and then what happened was people started liking the idea itself. So we started getting recognition because those surprise videos, those, I mean, are a little social media friendly and this that used to go viral in the in social on social media and that's how people started recognizing there's a group who delivers gifts surprisingly in nepal that was in early in 2017 and we started getting requests from people that uh, why don't i mean one of the it was in the friend circle itself but one uh, of my friend um, his girlfriend was coming back from uh, singapore after five Five years and then he wanted to plan one month of surprises full of surprises and that's how we looked for all kind of we came up with so many surprise ideas uh, right from airport picking up at airport with musicians then taking her to the backpack trip um, uh, making i mean having get together of our own childhood friends and so many other such ideas and we implemented all of them and it was documented well documented with videos photos and we used to share that in social on social media that's the time actually pe people started telling, I also want to do this, will you manage for me? And that started being, becoming business. We're not focused on experiences in the beginning, but it was market demand that we started thinking, okay, in Nepal, people are looking for experiences. And Nepal is a place where we can have so many experiences that in other part we can't have, maybe you can have your birthday celebration at the base camp of Mount Everest itself, or plan marriage proposal at the Everest, uh, so that's the thing that we came up with extraordinary. I mean, those experiences that possible in Nepal only, and we started uh, looking for. We did, we did research, we did uh, feasibility study, and we tried some kind of prototyping and MVP with our own friends. We took them to that place. We did photo shoots and a lot of stuff, and that's how we started that journey. And after a year in 2018, uh, our sales got. I mean, the revenue and everything growth of our team was nice. It was going good because February is month of love and definitely that month a lot of gifting happens and people buy a lot of experiences that month and we're having really good sales that month and we thought now it's time to grow uh, we uh, on i mean in 2017 we were working in a very small room uh with just uh, five people four of us were co-founders one of them was craft maker and she used to help us with a lot of stuff as well. And we have five people we thought now we need to grow. And we, we became a team of 20 people. 
uh, with a big office. That's something, I mean, in young age, if you have money, you spend it. I mean, you think of having, you see in television, you see businessman, you see a successful entrepreneur, maybe you have to have a good office. That's the something that, I mean, I was in my just, I was 21. So maybe that was something that fascinated me and uh, we made a wrong decision. We thought, uh, let's expand. We started expand. Uh, I mean, all those saving, all those kind of, I mean, every revenue that we are generating, we used to spend in office, team members, making it fancy. And that's something that we did. And during that time, I also got an opportunity to travel to US. Uh, so there's a, the, in from, I mean, US, US State Department has a program called International Visitors Leadership Program, IBLP. So they take uh, every leaders from their, I mean, different countries, travel to US, uh, learn different uh, act. I mean, if you, if you are a young entrepreneur, they are going to take you to, uh, to learn what's the scenario in entrepreneurship, youth employment in US. That's the kind of program that I got uh, invited to travel to US. and. And I definitely said yes. I then I went there. Uh, I traveled for a month in the US. I learned a lot of things and came back. And when I came back, situation of my company was worse already. We have we are in negative cash flow with a lot of debts. And almost the time was we need to sort it down. Uh, it was the scenario. And four of us, I mean, those my seniors, co-founders, they decided to uh, two of them decided to quit because uh, they felt like this is not the right thing. Uh, I mean, it was our passion, but maybe this is not going to be our career. Uh, that was the time I made again, another decision that I didn't want to quit because I felt like this is, this will go big, but it's, I mean, we did, we made a mistake because we were not having good foundation of business. So I felt like I need mentors and I started looking for mentors actually. Before that, I, I didn't have any kind of mentors. Uh, we used to, uh, I mean, give mentorship session for me in, in entrepreneurship, be it marketing, uh, sales, uh, product development, even uh, giving customer service and a lot of stuff. And because everything was going in a negative way. So I thought of looking for mentors. I started reaching out to people. And then at that time, I found one opportunity that was Global Student Entrepreneurs Award. Uh, that's, uh, that, that, that's shown in the documentary on the room. So I applied, um, I think it was uh, the last day for the application. I applied in the last day itself. I got selected uh, and they told me that I had to do business pitching and I've not done, I, that was my first time I heard about uh, the, I mean, you have to do your startup pitch, pitch. And what was that? I first thing I did was I Googled it. I found Shark Tank. I found a lot of videos. I started watching it. That's where um, I started thinking, okay, this is how you pitch your business. These are the things that you can do, including your pitch take. That's the first time I heard of the word pitch take also. <laughs> so it was already a year that I started business, but I didn't know anything about entrepreneurship or startup competitions, pitching in front, in front of investors. And because in Nepal, the, I mean, the ecosystem, entrepreneurship ecosystem, startup ecosystem is very young. Uh, I mean, we don't have big giants or unicorn companies yet. Everyone is like uh, in that direction, but most of them started in 2014, 13 um, startup companies. Uh, that, that's the age of our companies. So uh, we started in 2016. Uh, so that's why uh, we were also early, I mean, in the early batch itself of startups. And uh, I had to do business pitching and I took part, uh, I did it. Uh, I mean, I did it, I, I tried my best, I gave my best because it was a competition I was taking part, uh, I mean, where there's going to be winning and losing, except sports, I mean, I used to play football, but uh, besides that, I, I mean, it was, it's been so long after schools, I've not taken part in any kind of competition and in my, uh, and I'm taking part in one kind of competition where it's about business and I have to pitch and I literally worked so hard and I made it in Nepal, I won that competition. So it's, it takes place in every country, I think. I think in India also, we, yes. uh, it's Global Student Entrepreneurs Award that, have, that takes place every year. Uh, so in Nepal also, we have that and I took part and I, we got selected. I got selected actually, I got that award from Nepal and I got to represent Nepal and in, 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 it's a student world cup. So for entrepreneurs. 
So uh, that was taking place in Macau. And in between that, I got an email from National Geography saying that we want to feature you. And I, I thought that was some kind of fake email because um, it was said that uh, we really liked your idea of um, I mean, making people happy uh, and something like this. And we want to feature you in our documentary uh, on the room that the, something like that. I got a song, long email and there was uh, past all the trailers of those uh, similar kind of documentaries as well. I watched it and I thought, okay, this might be true. And I just replied back and it progressed. I mean, they told that they're coming to Nepal uh, and they followed me for a week in Nepal. They followed my personal life. How do I work? Uh, my, my college, everything, my friends, my parents, my mentors, everyone. And they made a documentary out of it uh, and they even followed us in the competition that we were uh, competing in Macau. And uh, I mean, that was, uh, you could, I think if you've seen the documentary, you'll see me very camera size sometimes. I mean, I, I, I give a smile, but I was like, I, I, I didn't, I, I was going so much out of words. I didn't know how to express things. Uh, but I did my best at that competition. I learned so much that I learned about business pitching so well that I came back. I could not make it. If you see the documentary, that's I, that's a, uh, if you have not watched it, uh, someone else is doing that. But we're very good friends right now. All of us, I mean, all those student entrepreneurs, we call it same like teenpreneurs, we call it studentpreneurs. Uh, so uh, all of us are good friends. And I came back to Nepal and then I took part in other business competitions, startup competition that was taking place in Nepal. I won all of them. Then I traveled to Cambodia, uh, won from regional Asia itself. Then I uh, went to Switzerland. I did so many investor pitch, pitching uh, right after that competition. So for me, that was a milestone because that was my first competition, but it actually uh, gave me so much ex of experience that I can now pitch well about my business to anyone. And, and even we won, so I think uh, we did it in the right way. Uh, so that's how we started, but then, and then we need it now we, to grow. Uh, we are making things right in our business itself along with those competitions because we're having so much of mentorship sessions. And uh, even we joined boot camps, accelerator programs, and so many things. If you know about this incubation centers, accelerator programs, we joined everything and we made our I mean, fundamentals of business right. And we thought now it's time to um, raise investment from investors. And we got investment and we thought now it's the right time to grow. We are trying to expand all over Nepal, uh, come up with extraordinary experiences for even uh, people from outside Nepal because we wanted to sell, uh, because we seen people travel to Mount Everest or mountain reasons. But uh, if we come up with uh, the plan your marriage proposal or something like that at the at the highest altitude i think it's going to be a lifetime memory for anyone and they would definitely pay for it so we were coming up with it we were preparing a lot of things we're investing i mean we raised investment and we're doing it but again covid happened <laughs> then this pandemic came along and it so kind of we had a lockdown for almost six, six months more than six months so uh, that definitely made us pivot our business from experience to product again. So we started uh, going back to cakes, flowers, delivering any kind of gifts. So right now offering happiness, we as uh, Nepal's leading gifting company. So we do it all sort of gifting, not just experiences. We deliver all kinds of gifts, even corporate gifting and everything. So that's the song, that's the gift that COVID gave us to us, <laughs> gave to us. So, but we pivoted our business model and uh, recently in this 2021 itself, I started one of the largest uh, bakery chain in Nepal. It's Oho Cake Private Limited, uh, because we figured out that the business of cake in Nepal, it's, I think in India also, it's very big. Uh, even in every birthday, in every occasions, we start, we uh, are cutting few cakes. We used to, I'm at least doing two or three cakes in every occasions, because one with friends, one with colleagues, in maybe in office, uh, one with somebody else. So that's the business that's growing in Nepal itself. So uh, now in 2021, we started, we right now have three factories in Kathmandu itself. And we're one of the largest uh, bakery chain and we're still growing. So, and it is technology driven. Uh, I'm not a technology student, but in this 
period, I mean, four or five years, I think I worked with so many developers to develop e-commerce website uh, and even apps. So that's where I learned about product designing and everything. Uh, it's all self-study. It's all uh, reaching out to random mentors. That's how I am doing it. And I think uh, along with those challenges that I made mistake, I mean, we get uh, fascinated easily. We see social media, there are entrepreneurs, we see, or media that show that success stories only, we don't see failure stories. And when you reach that bottom rock, I mean, I reached it so many times. I shared about one when we were almost bankrupt. Even my co-founders left the team. Uh, that was the time. But later on, uh, even after that as well, even the, during, during this COVID, we raised funds and all those investments, we put in something uh, which was not giving any out, output to us. And we had to work from zero again to bounce back. And currently we're doing right. Okay, not very great, but we're doing good. Uh, but we're woeful. Uh, so that's the thing that we're doing. And uh, from right 2016 to today, uh, in Nepal as well, people uh, recognize me as someone who makes people happy. Uh, that's the kind of, I mean, that's something that gives motivation to me to work more. Uh, my team and I mean, everyone in my company believes in making people happy be it by providing experience, uh, doing small activity. So anything it can be, even little things can make people happy. So that's something. And uh, let me share one, uh, I mean, next part. Um, uh, almost, uh, let's say 20% uh, of Nepalese are living abroad for employment the, uh, and even for education, they have went abroad because the scenario of politics and uh, even everything in the country is not going right. So your youths get frustrated here, they go abroad, but there's a family dislocation. I mean, uh, one of one as an abroad, the family is here. So that's where we're connecting. And we get so many messages every day from abroad uh, telling that you guys are actually helping us to connect with our families um, because they get, don't get to celebrate their occasions. Uh, now, now we're actually building a platform where people are sending gifts from all around the world in Nepal. So uh, that's something that we've been doing. Uh, for now, I'll just keep this much. If there's any questions, I would like, love to answer. Thank you. Super, super. Uh, amazing, Santosh. So, Santosh, what you shared is so powerful that always na, social media will tell you about the success stories. Nobody will tell you what struggles. So, when people look at you, they must be saying, wow, you have featured in an international documentary, you have gone to international competition. But nobody knows the kind of struggle and pain you have gone through to reach that position. So, glad, Santosh, that you shared uh, uh, with such honesty and uh, with such details and I'm sure that all of our team trainers are going to learn a lot from that. Now, uh, all team trainers who have any questions, please raise your hand and I will unmute you one by one. Okay, so let's start with Adira. Yes, Adira. Uh, hi. Uh, so I had a question. Is a lot of the time uh, our countries aren't shown in media, they stick to like extreme stereotypes. So uh, do you think that your idea and you being in the documentary helped change the perspective a little? So I think uh, for me being featured in that documentary, uh, in the beginning it was a learning process. I didn't know what's going to happen next. I, I, I didn't know it's going to go international, this global, that I would actually be sharing my story to uh, I mean, cross border itself to someone in the other country in India. So we are so culturally similar country. We have similar problems. We have similar, I mean, a lot of nature is seen. Uh, so getting featured in that documentary, uh, because uh, I was actually selected from Asia itself. So one of the, the other asked from Europe, uh, South America, Africa, and I was from Asia. And I, I don't know why they selected me uh, from Asia, but uh, after I got selected in that documentary, I've, I'm started get, I've started getting messages from all around the world that this business is somehow going to work in their country itself. And I know that this similar kind of business, not the exact one, but similar kind of business is working in India as well. I, I've, I've done a lot of research as well. So there are companies, similar nature in India, so many companies actually. Uh, and with a few founders, I've get. I, I've connected to them personally. I've asked, I mean, if we can do some kind of collaboration, 
uh, I think uh, that's the kind of, I mean, uh, learning that I've got or opportunity that I've got from this uh, documentary, after this documentary. But uh, moreover, it's like, uh, it's like this documentary kind of have shown my, uh, just like Nitesh said, it has shown uh, my success story or they've shown me as someone who's been doing it's wonderful, but definitely there, there are times when I go uh, to my lowest point, uh, maybe my key employees or my team members, key team members leave the company sometimes. Sometimes I have to uh, experience bankruptcy or uh, even I sometimes get confused as well because when you start young and you have ambition, you want to reach somewhere and you feel like this is not, I think, where you belong, you want to do more and you get confused again. I do get confused and though I have been in the business already for five years, is it the same thing that I want to do for the rest of my life or what do I want to do next? There are a lot of confusions, there are a lot of things and I think similar kind of uh, uh, recognitions or actually make me um, feel motivated, go up your, I watch my documentary almost every month now, nowadays because it actually inspires me to do more uh, because I don't want to be it like, this is this. I don't want to show this next year. I don't want to tell people that I got featured in this documentary and this is my I mean so peace thing. I want to do something more. I want to achieve more. That's I want to push myself beyond that. So that's why I watch that documentary every time. I feel like I I have to do something. I have to get recognition and create impact and that extent that this documentary will be nothing. So wow. that's something. Yeah. That's that's so powerful, Santosh. A lot of times we start living the glory of our past so much that our future is impacted. What you just said that you want to do something that that documentary will become normal is so powerful. Amazing. Okay, uh, next question. Team trainers, raise your hand. Shalaka. Yes. So, uh, so when you reach the rock bottom, how do you come up? Like, like as you said, uh, after taking investments, uh, if things go wrong, that sounds very scary. So, like, how do you come up from that situation? Um. So, uh, in the beginning, I mean, in in two thousand eighteen, when we were almost bankrupt and my co-founders left the team, I think. Uh, but I had a hope. I mean, I had kind of uh, hunch that this business is going to do something good. That was a hunch that actually kept me uh, go forward. And I started reaching to mentors. Actually, I felt like um, reaching to mentors really helped me because people were suggesting me, they were asking me questions. And I was a little close-minded till that time because I used to think that whatever I'm doing is right. But but after that point, when people meant and having a lot of mentors, they started questioning uh, the way I was operating, the way I was thinking and everything. And that, the, that's, that was the period that I became so much open-minded that I right now, if I get any kind of silly idea, I implement it. I see once I, at least for once I implement, I, I don't say no to anything. If I get my team member comes up with, let's say, uh, something that's not going to work, I feel like that's not going to work, but I feel like let's give a try because we have to learn from this. I should not be close minded. I give a, I have become so much open minded. Mentorship has helped me a lot. Uh, and the hope that that feels like uh, future is going to be bright or uh, the kind of work that I'm going doing, uh, people are appreciating it. So that's something that keeps me moving, actually. Mm, I think that's that's how that's that's the foundation of getting bouncing back. But definitely, uh, with I mean, step wise, we have to work on everything that went wrong. Maybe that's the personal. I mean, uh, that should be your attitude or your uh, nature. That I'm going to get bounce. I, I'm going to bounce back. I'll do everything that's possible. I'll reach out to people. I'll do everything. That's the attitude that you should be having. Rest, I think, can be managed. Uh, you'll find mentors, you'll find experts who are going to make things right and make you bounce back. But I think you should believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself and your idea, then I think uh, you can't bounce back. Super, super. 
so the takeaway here is whenever you are in a struggling time the belief that the future is going to be amazing and the belief in yourself and your product actually helps you bounce back amazing amazing uh, let's move to the second third question uh, prisha Uh, yes, coach. Um, hello. Um, uh, so my question is that uh, you said that when you had uh, reached one point of the company that everything was going wrong, and you said that uh, two of the employees quit. So uh, how did you get back up? Like, like what did you do? Um, so just like I said, I think uh, first thing that I did was uh, let me share that story I've not shared here. So uh, I came back from US, then I started reaching to mentors. They started telling that, why do you need this big office? Why do you need 20 employees? Why do you need this? Why are you doing in this way? There were so many questions being ordered, I mean, uh, asked to me. And I started reflecting and finding answers to do all those questions. And first thing that I did was to cut off the cost because we're in so much debt already. I decided to move my office. I did a I mean, team meeting, I said that we are now almost in the bankrupt CP time, but I mean, there was something so interesting happening because uh, we're, in the, we're almost bankrupt, but we are getting featured in the media saying this is one of the, uh, the creative, the most creative company that has been successful in this year and we're getting featured in the media and everywhere. But uh, outside, it was so glorified. Inside, we had, we had been, I, 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 mean, I think that's Everyone, if you are a personal, I mean, when you have something personal, I mean, public image, I think that ha that's going to happen. You're going something with something else, but outside it's being portrayed uh, so well. So, I mean, like it's being glorified. And that's, that's, that was the case uh, during um, the time actually. And then uh, what I did was to cost, to cost, cut down the cost. I told that uh, maybe I, I, I might not be able to pay you guys for like few months because we don't have any uh, savings and we have so much of debt already and and from tomorrow we, we're not going to have our own office as, as well so we're going to shift to one of our the, uh, one of our friends consultancy so he used to run uh, um, tuition class and in the morning in the day that tuition class classroom used to be empty so i reached out to him and i said i want to use your classroom for uh, let's say i don't know for how long but till i bounce back i want to use your classroom during my during the daytime and he said yes and when i got that email from national geography I, I, we didn't have our own office we we're in the classroom we were in classroom with uh, i think nine people we had nine people team that time because 11 of them left because they didn't believe in the idea of offering happiness or um, actually maybe not offering happiness, um, believed in the idea that we'll be bouncing back. <laughs> and those nine actually believed, they told, we're not, we don't want salary right away, we can pay whenever we bounce back. And before, um, uh, I mean, National Geography came to Nepal to do the shooting and everything, I think it was after three months, uh, we already had our office, so uh, we made right things right, but we didn't have that lavish or fancy office. We had what we could afford, <laughs> but at, at least we had office. So we did, uh, the first thing that we did was cut, cut down the cost, made our product right, what, and reached out to mentors, be open, I became more open-minded, and that's how I bounced back and made things right. So, yeah. So far, Santosh. Santosh, it was also said that when you are doing good, everybody is with you. But the real ones are those people who are with you when you are struggling. Those who really believe in you, not because what they see on the outside, because what they see in the inside. So powerful, Santosh. Thank you for sharing that. So now we will take questions from the coaches. Uh, Neetu? Uh, yeah. Hi, Santosh. This is Neetu here from Stockholm. Uh, I would like to ask a question to you, like, as you mentioned about bankruptcy. Now, when you see yourself, when you start anything, for example, you started baking and the cakes uh, as an experience given to him, uh, people, are you thinking about profitability or right now also you are thinking only of the growth, you know, expanding your thing. So what is in your head as a entrepreneur from your last five years experience? I think uh, it's uh, for now. I think when I started this cake business, I mean bakery business, um, I did something right. That was I found uh, 
my co-founders who were complimenting me. I, 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 didn't ha I don't have my finance background, so I have someone from finance and I have someone who have prior experience in running uh, cake, uh, I mean, even cake factory itself. So uh, we three co-founders are of different diverse group. I, I had experience of running gifting company for so long. Uh, one has uh, in baking and production of cakes, other is from finance uh, background. So that actually helped us uh, to grow faster. But while growing faster this time, definitely we were looking at our numbers. So if this was a business actually uh, where we kept very little money, uh, we started very small. We didn't know because it was a hard time during pandemic that we started this business. So it was like, let's give a try. If this is going to click, maybe we have to expand. Otherwise, we can sort it down. We started with uh, a capacity of just 10, I mean, manufacturing or producing 10 cakes per day uh, with a very small production unit. And then um, it clicked. We we're getting so many good demands. People were ordering every time and we felt like we have to expand our capacity and that's how we started doing it. And in this business, we have not kept my single penny itself. We are actually generating so much of revenue from that business itself that we're keeping for the growth, we're reinvesting it. So that's something that we've been doing right now. Uh, we are in profitable uh, condition itself, but um, we're not taking salary or having fancy office. We are just investing in growth right now. So that's something that I, I think made uh, right decision right now. That's what I feel it's right. Maybe yeah. something. No, I, 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 I get my answer. I think to start it up, keep it simple. And it's a good to have a diversified people around you in a collaboration like a co-founder, which yes, helps sir. you to, you know, which helps you to lead ahead. So I get it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Super. So Santosh, uh, one more question from Coach Swati from Kolkata. Hello, sir, Santosh. Am I audible? Um, yeah. Yeah. So like me and my sister, we had also started a similar thing of designing and creating personalized gift items. It was in 2009 when it was my parents' 25th anniversary. So we had designed a lot more items like uh, magazine, newspaper, personalized invitation CD using uh, Hindi cinema movies and then changing their face. It's called face morphing. But then we did not know when to start hiring. Like when is the right time you know that you can start hiring? Because you also mentioned in your story that once you started growing, you started hiring people 20 of you and all and that was not a right decision so when do you actually get to know like you know you should expand we were only two and then I got married so the business was a little down and then she got married so the business was off only the, then we had kids and all so when is the right time to you know hire people and expand your business uh, I think that's a very interesting question I think um, so based on my experience I'm not an expert but based on my experience I think um, like you said, a lot of, I've seen a lot of, uh, I mean, those who have started, uh, I mean, uh, gifting company or to, uh, even home-based gifting company, I would like to call. So um, the main problem that uh, most of them have is scalability. They don't know how to expand their business or they don't know how to hire, or how, how are they going to actually scale and be very big company. And we did it in the same way. We started uh, actually, I mean, making crafts and everything by ourselves. But later we realize doing this, we're not going to expand. Uh, we will be making gifts. Uh, we might be hiring people, but it's going to take a lot of effort. And the, I mean, let's say we're not going to be in numbers. And what we decided is now we'll outsource everything. So then we started contacting home best gift make, gift. I mean, craft makers, those students who love doing DIYs, craft works. We started giving them jobs actually. And we became a platform where we used to give them ideas, uh, give them, um, I mean, every raw materials they require, pay them well, and they used to work from their home and we used to sell that. And that's how we actually did something twist in our business itself because we're doing the same thing, but the way we're doing was a little different. I think uh, that's when we realized that this is not going to be profitable, that was one point. And uh, in other business, let's say, in cake or uh, in cake also we right now like like I said we are 
growing very faster and uh, we are hiring a lot of people too but it is i think major i mean uh, in the beginning we just had one safe we used to make everything but later we we got good demands uh, when you have customers i think you you can when you have good numbers for but you should know that these numbers will sustain sometimes you might get occasional orders in gifting it happens a lot because you might get some months are very well or yeah, i mean there are so many occasions so you might have good revenue and you invest on that don't make you should not be making decisions but if you have sustained growth for a few months or if you see good trend i think you should uh, but best on the customers and revenue i think if you are having good uh, revenue you should be hiring and you should come up little i mean if you are doing everything in the beginning we used to be a delivery boy we used to uh, be someone we used to uh, in i mean do everything we used to decorate the play venue ourselves we used to do marketing we were customer service everything but later on uh, we realized that we are getting so many customers i think we should hire someone in this position and leave this uh, uh, job and do something else in the growth section so that's how some we started doing it Amazing, thank amazing. you, thank you, sir. So, Santosh, thanks, thank you for that amazing answer. Now, I will be asking two questions on the behalf of the community, uh, and uh, we have many questions here, but uh, due to lack of time, we will be limiting to two questions only. So, the first question that I want to ask Santosh is regarding your GSC experience. So, when you went to Macau, and you were among other student entrepreneurs from the world, what difference did you see between the student entrepreneurs coming from nepal india pakistan bhutan especially our asian countries visa wise the student entrepreneurs coming from european countries coming from the american continent um one i think in terms of business it was uh, i mean uh, different because the kind of problem that they were trying to solve was Uh, most of them were based on technology or let's say data driven some were trying to solve climate change that that was the case but uh, in our part of country it was local problem that we were trying to solve some were trying to actually create uh, give provide more jobs they were trying to start a small venture that was the case i think i think all of them were like in bangladesh from bangladesh we had someone who was working in uh, menstrual hygiene uh, that was i mean but you won't see that happening in us or somewhere because right. uh, she was working in the local area itself uh, in the rural area and from india i think we had uh, during our time uh, he had a he also had a something uh, in menstrual hygiene products he also had the same business uh, and uh, mine was trying to provide jobs and solve that family dislocation that we had because because of uh, i mean everyone is migrating outside the country so i actually that was the problem that we were trying to solve uh, at least bridge the gap emotional gap and in sri lanka we had i think he had something they were making some kind of uh, coasters from coconut trees and the similar kind of business that's eco friendly products but it's kind of that kind of business so what i feel is in terms of business it's so different you see um, someone from us they are doing climate uh, climate change products or to next level i mean that's scalable maybe scalable you see that kind of thing but in nepal in south asia we feel like we're doing so locally i think but that's also good that's i think uh, we are solving local problems more moreover they are solving trying to solve global problems and problems next problems but in terms of entrepreneurs what i found difference was definitely um, not generalizing it but i think um, the kind of uh, they were i started started reading too much of books after i came back from gsa before that i used to read very few business books or i didn't used to read books itself and then i came back and felt like every time when we were in the community we were like i think 53 of us were there and we were so good close for we were there for like almost a week so we we know each other so close we are having uh, same competition where but they used to read so many books and i feel like this is something that we everyone should learn i mean uh, or from early time we, i did have that uh, i mean uh, habit so that's the habit that i 
started developing right after GSEA. So I think, yeah, that's the thing. Super, super option. Because I strongly feel that I also tell this to our team friends also, that the more you learn, the more you read, the more you read from other entrepreneurs, the more your journey will be successful. Now the last question, Santosh is, Santosh, uh, if you get a time machine and you go back to your age of 15 years, what things you will do differently? All right, so this is uh, definitely a challenging question for me, but I think uh, I would do, I would read books, definitely. I, I actually, I, I, one thing that I, I would not miss is I should have done this. I feel, I feel like I should have done this very early. Um, I would invest in my growth, personal growth, it be in terms, in terms of maybe public speaking, communicating well, technical skills, anything. I, I, I think I would have invested so much in skills that uh, right now it would have been so easier for me to do a lot of work. Uh, even to express my idea, I, I would be a very good public speaker. I would have done that if, well in the beginning itself. So as an introvert guy, I didn't know the value of every, these things. And I did it a little late, late. I think 16, 17, I started doing it. But uh, I did so many things that maybe I did not work much on my skills. I, I did it much in networking. I had a very good network in Nepal, but I did uh, invest in my skills. So I think I would invest in my skills and knowledge. Super, super simple. Santosh, the best part I observed, which actually resonated with me, with the documentary also, all the participants during that competition were focusing on the business pitch. And you were among the only participant who was, apart from the business pitch, was also pitching the business during the competition. And that actually touched my heart. Because I saw that you were... Apart from your business pitch, you are also going and talking to people who are from uh, Nepal and telling them about your business. And what I feel, Santosh, is that is what a true entrepreneur is. Entrepreneur is not someone who is there, who is an entrepreneur from 9 to 6 when he's in office. He's an entrepreneur 24-7, wherever he is. Whether he is in office, whether he's on a vacation, whether he is uh, doing a seminar, he's an entrepreneur. And uh, that is what... Uh, made you so special Sandesh. I really really from the bottom of our heart uh, thank you for giving this wonderful time for giving this uh, amazing uh, moment of truths. I would request uh, all the participants and coaches to write uh, what you felt about this session in the chat box. I will be taking a screenshot of them and will be sharing with Sandesh soon. Thank you so much. Santosh, thank you for your time. Thank you for your knowledge and looking forward to see you soon. Yes, thank you so much. I, I hope to see you soon as well, everyone. Um, we, I think a lot, if you are in Nepal, definitely just, I am in, I mean, I'm very active in every social media. So if you are, if you have plans in coming Nepal, just drop me a message. I love to host you in Kathmandu. Uh, it will be our pleasure, Santosh. And very soon we'll be also discussing how we can uh, do this kind of work in Nepal in association with you. Yeah, sure. I think the, the similar problem and similar, I mean, a lot of similarities, cultural similarities that we have between India and Nepal. I think everything that's being done in India can be done in Nepal and in Nepal that, that's being done in Nepal can be done in India. Yeah. Thank you, Santosh. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir.